Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is an audit analytics workshop using IDEA. In today's workshop, we'll be covering accounts receivable. So there are four procedures we have to perform. Uh, tie the accounts receivable subledger to the trial balance, based off the case facts. Reperform the agent calculation and note any variances. Uh, identify any transactions invoiced in the current fiscal year, but not ship till after the fiscal year and randomly select two samples. And analyze the balance for the full cal calculation perform an independent calculation, noting any suggested adjustments. So allowance for some case facts. So allowance for doubtful accounts have been historically 0.1% of total sales. Uh, the process changed in 2010 and the calculation has been off since then. And revenue is recognized upon shipment of the auto, of auto parts. So let's take a look. So I've imported the calculation. This outstanding AR is what's what should be recorded in the general ledger. So let's take a look at the field statistics. So you'll see that's 331,750, the total AR. But in the GL, it is 300,000. And what's, what's derived from that is in fact, uh, because the allowance for doubtful accounts is 1% of sales and that amount does not include the allowance, is actually 1% of this total number is the variance, which it is. So we're good with procedure number one. Procedure number two is reperform the aging calculation and note any variances. So the aging calculation is currently right here. So you'll see those various date ranges. So what we actually need to do here is we're gonna use this nifty function called aging. Looks like I'm in the wrong table. There you go. Let's go to the correct one. So we'll go to aging. And we're going to go 2013 12 31 based off invoice date. And then we are going to use the various aging calculations here. Uh, these are the various buckets based off the data set. And we are going to create a table called, um, we'll just call it aging. That's fine. So what you notice is that these are these increments. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Increments 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 105. So really these are the equivalents of 0 to 30, 31 to 45, 45 to 60, um, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're going to do so that we can join these two tables and do a comparison is we are actually going to create a field and we're going to call this day range character and we're going to make it 20 and we're going to use various if statements oh okay we're going to use various if statements to get these calculations in let's do this manually if age increment equals 30 then I want it to equal this otherwise if it equals 45 I actually want it to equal this So basically, I'm just creating the new field uh, based off this data. Comma, might be forgetting a few commas that I have to fix afterwards. Comma, comma, forgot the comma here. Comma, comma, this is going to be 25 quotations here. Comma clip this to be ninety. Otherwise, so there's only one other option. And then I have to count the number of brackets. Oh, 
these are character fields. I'm going to put quotations around each of these. Uh, yeah, the only time you can just put a number there is if it's a fucking numeric field, but because age increment is character, it's defined here, you have to put quotations around it. And what you can do here is evaluate, and then you'll see the first. You'll see how it changes. And now what we want to do here is we want to summarize what we call day range. Total charges, we'll call this aging sum. So we have these calculations here, and what we're going to do here is join it with our aging, our client provided aging calculation. And we actually only want the balance, and we are going to match it based off of day range, and we'll call this aging comparison put all records in the primary and then what we'll do here we'll create a new field and we'll call it variance we'll create it using the numeric and essentially it's going to be just the total charge sum minus the balance So you'll see the variance is here. So you'll see that there's a miscalculation here. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, we've covered the reperformance of that calculation. Pretty quick and easy. Identify any transactions invoiced in the current fiscal year, but not shipped till after the fiscal year. So we're gonna go here. Uh, we'll see we have the shipment data here, and you'll see that it has the invoice data, the shipment data, the region. So we are going to just include the shipment data here. We'll do that through a join. We're going to include just the shipment date. I'm going to match it based off a of region. And sorry, we're actually going to do it based off of Change this to customer number and then change this to invoice invoice number. Uh, we're gonna include just the shipment date and we're gonna call this outstanding AR with shipment date. We're gonna include all records in the primary. So we're gonna take a quick look here. We'll actually see that there are some transactions here. So let's create a new table. We'll call this shipped after fiscal year. And this is where the shipment date is greater than the 31st, which is the fiscal year end. And then we'll randomly sample two of these transactions. And we'll call this shipped. Shipped after fiscal year samples. Include all the fields, two records, and change that. Perfect. And then we are going to export these samples. So they're going to be in the export folder. They're just, the name, they're just going to take the name of the table, which is fine. Now we're done these ones. This next one's a little bit more challenging and requires a little bit more creativity. So we'll see here that there has been variances since 2010, as the case has noted. So let's take a look at the actual, what we have here is the year, region, uh, the date range for the aging, the AR balances, and as well the bad debt. So one quick calculation that I want to I'm curious about to know is like how what's the bad debt relative to the AR balance? So we're gonna call this allowance percent, and we're gonna make it two. It's gonna be a straightforward one. Okay. 
Okay, that's interesting. A um, couple ways we can analyze. We can just sort. We can do it by uh, region and date range. See if there's a pattern. So we'll go. We'll just call it sort genius. Okay. So we see here. There's there appears to be a pattern. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, what we're gonna do next is actually do some analysis, see if that's actually true. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna summarize, add up all the percentages, and then divide by the number of records. So we get the average percentage by region, by day range, and then join it back and see if there's any issues there. So what we're gonna do here, go day range, I'm gonna summarize this. Alternatively, we could have summarized the AR in that day and then perform the calculation there, but it doesn't make that big a deal. Uh, we'll call this historical aging studies. Create a new record. We'll call this average allowance percent. Make this two again. Do this, divide by the number of records. We get these percentages, and then we'll join it back to the table. And we'll match it based off of region and then date range. I just want the average allowance because all the other data I already have, put all records in the primary, and we'll call this uh, historical aging with average. And then what we're going to do is quickly compare the average versus the actuals for each of the fields, and we'll call it variance. Make it two. It's going to be straightforward. And you're going to see that there doesn't appear to be any calculation. Looks like I didn't actually put enough decimal places so you can actually see it. So let's try that again. Okay, only one one miscalculation. So it looks like what we can do is use that, use this table, take this average, and apply it to our aging comparison data. So our aging data. So let's join the tables. one field which is this allowance percentage and we are going to match it based off of region and day range we're going to do all the primary and we are going to call this aging with uh, average allowance percent see how that turns out So it looks like all the percentages came in. Now let's apply it, apply it to the balances, create a new field. We'll call this estimated AFDA. Two decimal places. We'll basically do the average percentage times the total balance, which is total charge. And then we'll run some field statistics. And then we'll see that the estimated allowance is going to be 
23,000. 23,000, which is less than the 31,000. So the suggested adjustment is going to be an $8,000, approximately an $8,000 increase in AR since the allowance is lower, which means that the, the negative balance is, is lower, which means that the overall net number is higher. So just some quick analysis that you can perform around allowance or doubtful accounts. Obviously, it can be more complex. You can drill down to customer, to regions, to industry. So uh, lots of different analysis that you can perform in idea. I know that was relatively quick. So we can slow down, pause the video, um, see, see where I performed the calculation and really understand why. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Um, and until next time, thank you.